So with the options that were available, we had a, we so we had a couple of options. We could go with the standard digital uh, screening, which um, for some reason costs more, but um, it starts at 12:45, so that's the soonest that we can get out there and see the film. Um, and then afterward, I would have we would have enough time to come back, do whatever you want. I could go to the train and then go to work from there. Second option, and probably the most average option, was to go in IMAX because that was cheaper than standard. Starts at one o'clock, which spits us out at three fourteen, which means that we could still have enough time to come back, just kind of chill out, and then I can go take the train. And then the third option is the um, the real D three D showing at one forty five. So this option is probably the best one because I'm not that used to the whole IMAX thing anymore. And like when it is like a three D IMAX thing, they have like the weirder glasses. I don't think this one was three D the IMAX, but anyways. So this one was the for some reason the cheapest at 36 the IMAX was 38 and the standard was 39 for some reason uh, so of the three options we could either go to the IMAX have I don't know uh, go to the IMAX have a chancing at the quality of viewing and be able to spit out at an average at an okay time to go to work go to the standard digital not experience it in 3d but have a lot of time to get to work or go see it in 3d and immediately have to be dropped off at work like from the theater i have to be driven all the way to the pier we went with the real D3D option. So I'm gonna have to dress up in work attire, load up my longboard, and right after the th right after the movie, go to work. Expectations for the movie, go. Oh, I think uh, action thriller and Black empowerment. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I'm not really expecting a whole lot of like plot development or anything. But that would be a, that would be a nice bonus. Well, I've heard a lot of really good things about this movie, both story-wise and art-wise. That's good. That there's a villain that actually has that's actually like built very like a classical villain in the sense that like they've got like a really fleshed out backstory and you kind of are like, damn, like I know why you're a villain now. I think good villains make a good action. Yeah, so I hear that's that's one thing I hear. So that's what I'm expecting, and unfortunately though, you know, I I, I often suffer from the the whole thing of like when I have when I when I have an expectation it's like it's either met and it's just like meh but it's like never exceeded you know so it's like it's like it's either like below my expectation or it's met and it's like yay but you know that's about it but it's never exceeded and it's just like yeah so this might be different well I don't really have high expectations whenever I go see an action movie because I think they're kind of formulaic by this by this time you know the one thing the one reason why I was kind of avoiding the or I wasn't putting the IMAX showing very high on my like suggestion list was because um, from the commercials yeah. they had you know they show a lot of the um, uh, there's a lot of little action like action transition scenes that um, it reminded me a lot of, like, the, um, 
like the Transformers films where like they're you know they're tumbling and rolling you can't really see what's going on except it's because it's Marvel you know they they're really good at focusing on the on the character but the world becomes ambiguous you know <laughs> so it's like you can you can see the character clearly in his tumbling and his you know um, being tossed around but in that in that as a result though the world kind of tumbles around him and the world kind of becomes ambiguous yeah so it's kind of cool in that sense of like it makes you feel like you're the one doing the backflip you know because the world does kind of become a blur when you when you do those kind of maneuvers yeah but in both cases you kind of still lose half the action you know you get lost it gets lost but it's all fucked out yeah so that's why i was kind of um really sad about the whole thing of um uh the IMAX thing because that's a really huge screen and so scenes like that kind of get like super disorienting and sometimes you lose a lot of the um, detail and you get dizzy and it's motion sick. I don't think anyone in our family really suffers from motion sickness. Well, I don't like to be jostled around much. All right. So, I guess the verdict is, hasn't heard much of anything, but has low expectations in general. I've unfortunately heard some reviews and opinions, and have mediocre expectations. Alright, let's do it. Meh. Movie's done. It was pretty good. I liked it. Pretty um, good. It was a lot longer than I expected though. Like we were expecting to get out of there at three, in like the 350 areas. The minute that the very first credit started rolling, whipped out, whipped, whipped out a phone and it was 411. And we were both like, oh So now we're booking it to the beach. <laughs> Gotta go. So now it's a, uh, oh jeez. Man, it looks like. 432. Yeah, it's we'll 432. It. We'll make it. Uh... 449.